Hello everyone, this is Genius Yoshi and today we're building the Invincible Cusco deck. Now is this deck invincible? No. Is our Cusco invincible? Almost. Because Cusco is a high quester with ward, it means that it's immune to big Elsa's ability. It's immune to dragon fire. Let it go. You can't kill it with a single target removal spell. If you want to take it out, you can either do it through combat or through an area of effect type of removal. So your options are grab your sword and two copies or a be prepared. As long as Cusco remains unexerted. So as soon as Cusco goes to quest, he becomes exerted and the opponent can kill it by combat. And thanks to Cusco's ability, he can banish a challenging character and still gain some value. But in this deck, we're going to be keeping Cusco unexerted and still quest with him. So how are we going to do that? Well, we're going to be playing the repeatable unexerted source in Shield of Virtue, which allows us to ready Cusco. So we quest with Cusco, we ready him, immune to combat, immune to single target abilities, very difficult to remove for our opponent. We also have LeFou that has the same ability. Whenever you play it, you can ready a chosen character, readying your Cusco. And because we're going to be pushing that idea to the limit, we're also going to be playing a full playset of Fan the Flames. Just ready our Cusco again, can't be challenged, can't be defeated by combat. Alright, so that's pretty cool. So what else are you going to be playing in this deck? Well, that's the core. And if we're going to have an invincible Cusco, we can have a pretty tough Mad Hatter too. Now, Ward is what gives Cusco this extra layer of protection, but a Mad Hatter that remains unexerted is still pretty powerful. It's still weak to the single target removal spells, but it's a high level quest. It's a high ink quester, high lore quester that can't be challenged by combat because he's going to remain unexerted. <clears throat> In a similar way, we're going to be playing. Where's the four drop? Hans, the Scheming Prince, again another three quester with fairly weak stats. So we're playing a high questers and we're going to be protecting them by unexerting them with the cards that we've chosen so far. <coughs> but these cards are limited and we still need other ways to quest. So we're going to be playing some invasives with Pongo. We're going to be playing Tinkerbell for the evasiveness. And now's the time when we step back and take a look at what we have so far. So we have a pair of 5 drops, 3 4 drops, so that, that's, that's enough. Let's stop with the 4 drops for now. And a lot of repeatable, well, ideally we want Shield of Virtue because it's repeatable. Fan of Flame is going to get inked most of the time, but it might be the trump card later in the game to just protect one of our characters. And LeFou's a decent 2 drop. But I'd like to have some early game plays. So what does Ruby and Emerald have in terms of aggressive questers in the low drops? Well, we have access to Aladdin Prince Ali, which I'm going to include in the deck because he can also be invincible. Invincible, except he just dies to grab your sword. And everything dies to be prepared. So nothing has you survive, be prepared. You're never prepared enough. But Aladdin has ward, so he has protection from single target removal, and as long as we keep him unexerted, he can quest for one all day long. Also, there's not that many good two drop options in these colors, so we're going to be playing a full playset of him. We also have access to Flynn Rider, the Charming Rogue. <coughs> it's a two quester for two with a nice defensive ability. And. That's pretty good for our early game. We have the one drop, some two drops. We need some threes. So what's good in three? There's a Cheshire Cat. Easy two quester with benefits. I kind of like him. They're going to be playing some Mother Knows Best to have some tempo play. And now we're a little hard pressed to find another good tree drop. I mean, there's always Jasper. But we're trying to quest aggressively here. Uh, Iago, Loud Mounted Parrot, I thought of including for a little while. 
just to give Reckless an opponent character. Then we unexert our Yago, and he, and then we can either exert something else to force the opponent to challenge it, or just not quest with anything, and then the opponent has Reckless and no targets, so they just can't quest. But I wanted to be a bit more aggressive, and Aladdin's Tree Trap is going to be my play. Mostly because we've already added Prince Ali, and... Well, if we've added Prince Ali in this one, we might as well go for big boy Aladdin, Herrick Outlaw. And Aladdin, if you can get a good combat in, unexert it, get a second good combat in, or quest a second time, you can get a lot of value out of this guy, the Heroic Outlaw. <coughs> and then we take a look, we have some nice two drops, some nice threes, tons of four, five. So... We don't have a lot of defensive abilities. Our only kind of tempo removal spell is Mother Knows Best. The rest is all combat base or we're trying to race. So I'm going to include a full play set of Genie on the job for the tempo plays. Just a very solid card that acts as a removal. It's also an evasive to go with our evasive slash untargetable threats. And so Genie will take the last spot in our deck. Which brings us to the Invincible Cusco list. The list where Cusco is invincible and the list is quite invincible. But to know just how sturdy it is or how cool we can make the combo happen, we're just going to have to stay tuned and watch the deck in action with some games coming right up. Let's bring our opponents to Smash University and show them what we're made of. As we have a Shield of Virtue... Mother knows best. We're going second, so maybe you want to keep that mother knows best. Then a pile of inkables, so we're gonna keep that. Let's see what our opponent is playing. Carefree Surfer goes to the ink first. And on our side, it's gonna be Prince Ali. In favor of our Shield of Virtue. That's going to set the stage for an invincible Cusco. Be our guest from our opponent. And no turn to play. We'll send another Aladdin to the ink. I'm just not feeling Aladdin y today. And we'll play Flynn Rider. Applying some level of pressure to our opponent. Una Matata has no worry getting into the ink as the opponent plays a Tinkerbell. I think in this particular position I'd rather have another Flynn than a Street Rat. Although I do like the option of singing with singing Mother Knows Best. And I don't want to quest in this particular instance by the fear of Tinkerbell. So the opponent plays a big Tinkerbell, shifted here, takes out a Flynn to ping the other Flynn. It's backbreaking for us. Although there's always grab your sword, that's not much better. That our opponent just found. Goodbye, Flynn's. And Ariel can sing it for free. Actually, we can counter that. We're going to just force Ariel back into our opponent's hand so we don't get completely blown out. Except by a Tinkerbell. But, I mean, we know about the grab your sword. And grab your sword is still devastating. Maybe the opponent just hard casts it. But at least we'll get the tempo back to resolve our Cusco. If the opponent shifts to Tinkerbell, we are in deep trouble. Yeah, like that. The opponent had bowed out. We couldn't play around it. 
All right, well, goodbye, Flins. At least we've gotten one card out of your hand. Pair of part of your worlds. Well, that's okay. Well, it's not okay. It it moves us from being in a good position to being in a not devastated but not great position. But there we have it. Invisible, Invincible Cusco comes to the rescue. Except against Steel, actually. Because double grab your sword. Ah, the opponent beasts are shield. Come on. Does Steel have an answer for everything? The answer is yes. All right. <clears throat> well, if that's the play, do we want to quest with Cusco, LeFou, and Tinker? And just go off to the races? I think we do. So let's go to six. Maybe you're not fully invincible because the shield is gone. But we can still use LeFou to unexert you. And we're at seven. Just threatening. The opponent still has to grab, grab your sword, right? Maybe I should make an effort to play around the card that we still know about. What does Ariel find? Be our guest. Grab your sword. Takes out our LeFou. Maybe the opponent's hand is just three whole new worlds. We'd stand a chance against that. Or if we can top deck another shield, maybe. And bring our Cusco back to invincible mode. So now we, we have to just quest with Tinkerbell. Until we have lethal or protection for Cusco. And of course, if our opponent finds another grab your sword, then it slides out. survive the very dangerous Tinkerbell we might be able to survive the beast but we will not survive that second copy of grab your sword oof we've drawn pretty perfectly but it's just too much can you come back with Aladdin opponent goes to 14 I don't think so Let's just play one more turn. I mean, <clears throat> the opponent goes to 14 this turn and then just quests for lethal. And I don't have time to do anything with Aladdin. So I'll just concede. Too much, too fast, precisely when I didn't need it. Good way to win a game. Well played by our opponent. Let's see what we're getting this game. Shield of Virtue, Aladdin, Flynn, Mad Hatter, Cusco, Shield, Hans. It's pretty good. All Inkables. Flynn into Cusco with a shield to boot. And we're going first. So let's see if we can make the invincible Cusco dream come true. All right, we don't need two shields. One is enough. One in the ink, one in the play. Opponent's playing some Amethyst list. We'll ink the Mad Hatter. In favor of playing our Flynn Rider. Passing the turn back. 
Ooh, it's a ruby amethyst list. With a cauldron. <coughs> well, we'll play with what we have. Come on, Rafiki. You can't hit my Flynn. Not this turn. That's right. Semi invincible Flynn Rider. I'm not sure semi invincible really makes sense. Yes, that's just strong, tough, charming rogue. That's all I have to say about it. Maleficent. Maleficent's a bit of a pain. Alright, well, we'll play the evasive threat here. Because it's annoying for Ruby Amethyst. I guess we'll leave Flynn unexerted for now. Our opponent has too many cards in hand. It's not a big decision. Maleficent would just go and hit it. Hard cast friends on the other side into a sung friends on the other side. The opponent has a lot of friends, I think is what they're trying to tell us. Opponent playing their own version of the shield of virtue. Alright. Well, Cheshire Cat, you're going to the ink pile. Then now we're gonna play our fan favorite Cusco. And we're going to town questing. Quested to six. Opponent can go to five this turn, then we quest for five. Opponent can go to six next turn, then we quest. Yeah, I don't think we make it before be prepared. But we can force to be prepared. Unless the opponent has two street rats. In which case, the minus two ink is gonna make us look a little silly on the exact count. Opponent is setting up their wombo combo spam removal potential as Maleficent takes out her Flynn Rider. Also the opponent could also just have a kill spell for Pongo. He's not quite invincible. But at this point we're gonna utilize our combo. Cusco quests, Cusco unexerts. And Pongo is just evasive. If only he also had Ward and Indestructible. Because I mean, our opponent does have a full fledged board wipe in Be Prepared. Can't cast it this turn, but next turn it is a possibility. I'm almost tempted. Oh, maybe I should do that. <coughs> Let's think our ons. You know what? I'm almost tempted to genie bounce back my own Cusco. That way, the opponent is forced to play a board wipe to take out genie and Pongo who are pretty threatening by themselves. Then we play Cusco again, which forces another board wipe. Yeah, the opponent has to be prepared here, right? So we're gonna keep Cusco super protected in our hand. It means we can't win next turn, but we have two evasive threats, and the opponent can't Maleficent Dragon here. See, the opponent must play a be prepared. Mm, here it is. Drum roll. 
Okay, opponent Ursula's. That's fine. We go to 18. <coughs> what can our opponent have outside of it be prepared? An Aladdin and kill spell? That's okay. I think I can just pass here. We have significant evasive threats. And we're still pre Maleficent. Maleficent the dragon, of course. The tree drop can come into play. Point can't challenge, must take out both of our threats. Come on, opponent, play, de play these be prepared. Ready to face the couple. Although I guess Ursula can still sing and be prepared. There it is. Be prepared number one. Ursula sings to her doom. Very thematic, actually. All right. You must have another be prepared, because that's the only way you're going to deal with our Cusco. Cusco the Invincible. And then the irony continues because we're gonna have an Aladdin with the shield and we can we can have an invincible Aladdin if the opponent be prepared. It's forcing another be prepared, forcing another be prepared, and since our opponent's only allowed four in their deck. Invincible Cusco takes the win. Let's see what we can do this time. We have our shield, pile of inkables, a decent curve, then genie. What's not to like? It's only missing Cusco. That's a good card to draw into. All right, Sapphire and Steel, a pretty solid combination. As the opponent discards, fire the cannon. Interesting choice. I'll send Pongo to the ink and play our Shield of Virtue. Setting up for later stages of the game. Second Simba. Alright. Opponent is playing weaklings.deck. Either that or just a lot of card selection. Beast's Mirror, Fire to Cannon. Robin Hood. Not well, if you're playing the Simbas, Robin Hood makes a lot of sense. Find a cat. So we're gonna send the Aladdin away. And go with Flynn. This does feel like, like our opponent is going to be playing a lot of a whole new world in that deck. We see a hard-headed beast go to the ink pool after we've played our shield. It's quite interesting. Let me find another one. Well, here we just have to follow the curve, go with the cat, and quest with Flynn. Although I'm not overly fond of the Cheshire Cat when the opponent has a pair of Simbas on the battlefield. They're quite useful at dealing with E03. It's not the cards I want to banish. The bell comes in. Opponent double inks. Telegraphing a whole new world in hand. Almost assuredly. 
unfortunately there's not much we can do about it this is steel well, I'm gonna ink the Tinkerbell play the Hans bigger pressure I still have a quest with all my threats and I fully expect actually nothing here can sing a whole new world so the opponent would be singing it would be playing it off tempo which would still be fine hard casted think oh yeah shifted tinkerbell hurts like a truck um, how much do you care about that last card is the question this is a whole new world double simba hitting the cheshire cat yeah that has to be a whole new world which brings up the question do you sing the whole new world here or do you just take the the big hit with Tinkerbell hit Flynn ping the Cheshire cat and try to win with board presence I think you sing the whole new world well, our opponent arrived at the same conclusion if you disagree let me know in the comments below Now we have a mid full of cards, but the opponents mostly tapped out. The Simbas are going to trade with the Cheshire Cat, I imagine. And Bell could take out Flynn. It's probably what I'd do if I was our opponent. Opponent is starting to run out of time. The opponent decides just to pass the turn, not to give us any good combat. So I expect our opponent has he grab your sword and didn't want to sacrifice anything on board for it. <coughs> In which case, we really want to play Mother Knows Best. To force the opponent to hard cast it. It also means we don't want to be playing anything with two toughness or less. And we might as well just quest super aggressively here. Cats are not overly good here. Yeah, I have the mutter knows best. Bounds of the pair of Tinkerbells. Another shield doesn't help, and any of the two drops get blown are blown up. So I think we just pass the turn. Opponent's gonna hard cast to grab your sword or play the Tinker Bell. If they play Tinker Bell, we genie it back and quest for quite a bit. So the opponent has to grab your sword. I don't think Tinker Bell's enough. And her opponent doesn't have quite enough pressure on the battlefield. Well, Bell to Hans, both Simbas to Cheshire Cat. Or I guess one Simba to Flynn. But then what? I prefer both Simbas to the cat. Unless the opponent plays a Tinkerbell again, then Simba can take out Hans. Oh, fire the cannons. Yeah, we knew our opponent was playing some copies of that. Some cheap removal. Opponent hard casts to let it go. I'm quite surprised at that. Well, that gives us one more ink to play with. Opponent goes to eight. Double inks. And develops their brain.
So you know the opponent has the pair of Tinker Bells in hand. Small Tink, big Tink, Tink big. Right. Well, we're on six. Uh, we can go to seven, eight next turn. Eight has a nice Hans Flynn. LeFou, although I want to be careful about the two will the two willpower characters. For right now I can go Genie Second Shield, Genie Bounce Bell. Then the opponent drops a handful of cards, then I drop a handful of cards. Yeah, and activating activating shield costs three, so if I play Hans next turn I can't genie and activate. So now's the time for genie. Putting our opponent back quite a bit. We need to ink a card, and we're gonna be on eight next turn. Maybe nine. Three, seven. They really want a Hans Cat next turn. I don't need the second shield. One shield is enough. We're close enough to win in terms of lore count with 13. And I like the option of getting one ink off of our opponent. We'll have to do a little bit of questing that. If depending on what the opponent plays. Opponent lets it go. Hard casted. And the Simbas spam questing. Bell comes back. Bell's a big threat. So the opponent can quest for five, six, seven, eight next turn. Which means we need to threaten questing with lethal. And to do that, we can go four, seven, nine. Aladdin won't make a difference. Bell simply quests for too much. So our best option is just to threaten questing to 20. And if the opponent has one inkable card, a grab your sword. Then we'll lose the game. My favorite part. Not right now, it isn't. Probably for your for our opponent, that's their favorite part of Bell Strange but Special. Hades is also quite devastating. Well, now we need to top deck a bounce spell. Porn doesn't have an inkable, so that's 15. Porn can quest for 6. <coughs> Cheshire Cat, why don't you have any power? You can quest for 4 to 17, but that's not enough. Then we can't take out two of our opponent's threats there's just not enough let's go for the most we can LeFou ready your Flynn Flynn go fight that Simba you can take them down alright well there's only one thing left to do Cheshire Cat hit the Simba and then, well, Flynn won't make a difference. So Cheshire Cat, go hit the Simba again. And that'll be the end of it. Close call, but we just couldn't quite pull through. I hope that you've enjoyed this video featuring the invincible Cusco, whose deck was 
far less than invincible as we've seen in the gameplay, but had his moment of glory in game two as Ruby Amethyst stared the face of the unexertable Cusco and said, how am I supposed to control this? Very fun moment indeed. If you've enjoyed this deck, let me know in the comments below what tweaks you'd like to make, what you think of the idea. Uh, do you think that this deck will be more potent as we get more ward characters? Do you, do you think that we're going to get a fully indestructible, invincible character in the future? Let me know in the comments below. Again, I hope you've had a great time, and I'll see you next time.